Now, big news for defence this week. Labor announcing or re-announcing that it would spend uh, boost defence spending. This time they've said that it's going to be boosted by $50 billion over the next decade. They've also said they're going to redirect $72 billion to pay for new submarines, ships and drones. It has been met with criticism. The Australian's foreign editor, Greg Sheridan, slamming Richard Miles, the defence minister, saying Miles is like an ageing carnival magician. He keeps performing the same four-card trick, hoping his audience never gets wise to the old-fashioned and obvious trickery. Let's bring in now a defence expert, China expert and author, Paul Monk. Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Do you agree with Good Greg evening, Sheridan's Sarah. assessment there? Um, Greg loves to write with a, you know, a, a barb, you know, and uh, I think his high impact piece this morning would alert a lot of readers to the limitations in the way Richard Miles and the Albanese government have put out their their statement. Uh, but it's notable that Cameron Stewart in the same newspaper at the same time said, you know, the government's defence thinking is essentially on the right track. So it just goes to show that, that a lot depends on what angle you're looking at this from. What I would say is quite simply this, and this is plays essentially to Greg's remarks, that what the government seems to be doing is very cautious, right? In circumstances where it is agreed that we've lost our um, margin of safety, a 10-year time horizon for threats, uh, what they're saying is within 10 years, we will have something respectable. Well, why would you adopt that perspective? Why wouldn't you say that we have to be ready, that this is something we have to be galvanised about as a community, we need to purchase things in short order that would enable us to play a role in collective security in this region in an emergency, which could come at any time. And that the government is not doing. And, that, and that's the main concern, is that, you know, the spending's welcome, but it's too far down the track and we need the defence systems in place now. Former Home Affairs boss Mike Pizzullo uh, has made his first comment since he was sacked from the role. He's given an interview to a podcast uh, by former News Corp journo Paul Maley, and he's lashed defence and both sides of government. This is Mike Pizzullo. He says Australia should have been prepared for the rising threat from China years ago. Um, he said that history is going to judge Australia for failing to build more Collins-class submarines when we had the chance. Have a listen. Defence should have been held accountable for this from mid-2009. That was 15 years ago. So has Australia uh, dropped the ball? Have we lost uh, a decade? Yes, at the very least a decade, arguably as much as 15 years. Paul Monk, do you agree? Have we been too slow or is this, you know, all good and well to say in hindsight? No, we have been slow, Shari. I mean, those 15 years ago that Mike's referring to, I ran a series of seminars for the Submarine Institute, that is the professional submariners, on the question of what kind of submarine should Australia get. And uh, at the point where I was launching that set of seminars, the 2IC in the submarine project attended, and uh, he said, uh, we might want to hire you to do this thing for us, you know, to, uh, to fund this properly. And then that didn't happen. And eventually I spoke to the Deputy Secretary of Defence and he said to me, you need to understand that there is nobody involved in this decision who has any interest in transparency. In other words, there were special interests pushing and tugging and hauling in every direction. And that's why we didn't get a decision. We didn't mm -hmm. get clarity. Um, and uh, I was simply an external consultant and uh, there was nothing I could do about that if they weren't going to let me in the door. Uh, so I completely agree with Mike. We did drop the ball on that. We armed and we armed and we made one choice, then changed it, made another one, changed it, made another one. And then at the last minute, when the Virginia-class submarine became available under the Oculus understanding, we said, oh, well, let's do that. Mm. Um, but there's a long time horizon on that and there are all sorts of collateral problems associated with it. So mm. we do have a problem, but we also have the problem across the board, you know, and... Uh, what Greg Sheridan was saying today is, look, even if all we were going to do is get extra fighter aircraft, extra missiles, extra drones, surely we should be showing greater urgency than we're showing yeah. given the state of world uh, order. Yeah, volatility in so many different areas. Look, just quickly, Paul Monk, before you go, um, the Australian's political editor, Simon Benson, has, has just broken a story up on the Oz website where he's also reporting that Mike Pozzullo gave a speech last week where he said there's actually 
in his estimation, a 10% chance of conflict in our region before 2030. So clearly he um, would be referring to China here. You are a China expert. Uh, you know, do you think it could be this soon? Oh, I'd have to say yes. And it's interesting when you put numbers on something. It's, it's a degree of rigour to say I'm putting this, this number on my prediction. I'm not sure how he derived the 10%, but let me put it this way. Um, there were many people in Europe, including Volodymyr Zelensky, who right up to the death dock did not believe. Mm. Uh, and I think I was speaking to you on the eve of the invasion and said mm. I didn't believe that the Soviets the Soviets, that Putin would be so foolish as to launch an all-out invasion. Mm. We were wrong. He did. And and the CIA had anticipated that he would and told Macron, told Schultz, told Zelensky, this is what Putin's going to do. And they didn't believe him because they thought, nah, surely he wouldn't do that. But he did. So what we have to take very seriously is that because we know that China is hazing Taiwan, bullying Japan, bullying South Korea, trying to coerce us, mm. you know, um, engaging in grey zone activities with the Filipinos, at any tick of the clock, it could use force. And yeah. and the calculus mm. that will be behind that decision is in the hands of one man, Xi Jinping, because he's the yeah. absolute dictator in China at the moment. Yeah. And, he, and he's most worried about his age. legacy, not our security or the regional security. Paul Monk, always great to have Absolutely. you Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much for your time.